All right, guys, we're back. We're gonna finish up this crankshaft install. I was waiting on the one piece of remain seal and uh, I didn't set anything yet. What we do wanna do is we wanna uh, lube all these down, tighten them in three steps. Because it's a four bolt, uh, we're gonna take it to 110 with engine oil. And uh, the important thing is, is that when we tighten everything down, we're gonna take it all to 10, right? We're gonna tap them down and seat them with a rubber mallet. Once we hear them bottom out and we hear that they're uh, making a good, good contact, we're going to go through and, and set them all to 10, 10 pounds. So we'll tighten them to 10 pounds, we'll loosen them back up, and then it's important on this engine that we set this rear main bearing, which is a thrust bearing. So what we're going to do to do that is basically tap it from the front and from the rear, and what we're essentially doing is getting it so it's not always making contact with that uh, with the rear main and we're getting it as center as possible right we're seating that bearing to make it as center as possible in this block just to keep from premature wear another thing we can do is uh, check everything with plastic gauge although I know that these are the correct size bearings the box was labeled that they're the correct size bearings the crankshaft measured uh, correctly I'm sure they're correct, but we're just going to uh, put some plastic gauge on there and show you guys how to do that. Uh, when you do do plastic gauge, you really need to do it dry. But again, for our purposes, we're just going to wipe, wipe this one side clean. But for those of you guys who don't know what plastic gauge is, and I'm not insulting anybody's intelligence, I just, I don't think a lot of people use it. Um, I use it all the time if I'm working on any engine, right? If I take an oil pan off or something like that, uh, it doesn't matter what it is. I always look at the bearings, it's just getting information to know, right, you see what kind of, how that engine was taken care of, you can see uh, foreign material and stuff in the bearings, you can see if it's run hot, usually I just pull one and if it looks good, right, there's some slight pitting in it or uh, the protective Teflon coating or whatever is rubbed off, that's perfectly normal, you'll see a couple spots in those where maybe a piece of, uh, I don't want to say a piece of sand, but a small, small piece of material got in there, uh, you'll, you'll see some light scratches, that's pretty normal stuff. Uh, but when you actually see, when they actually look really uh, corroded and stuff like that, or they look like uh, maybe they got hot or got something big in, in the uh, journals, then you know you have an issue with that engine and you need to go ahead and uh, find out what the problem is. So, like I said, uh, small blocks, big blocks, usually Chevy's clearances are around 0 0.025 for, for mains and, and pretty close to that for your connecting rods. It changes on each, you should look that up for whatever engine you're working on. But again, the, these plastic gauges come in different sizes. One side says millimeter, one side says inches, right? And basically how this works is, is I clean, clean whatever I'm measuring and I put a small strip on it and smash it down. So this actually measures 0.001 to 0.003. Now, the wider it is after it smashes down, right? the tighter the clearance, if that makes sense. So this is not an exact science, it's just to uh, roughly tell you where you're at. And I'll show you where we're at on this. We're, we're right between 0 .002 and 0 .003. And uh, again, it's not an exact science, you just kind of measure it up, I'll show you. All right, so looking at this, right, we make sure we're on the right side, we're on inches here. We make sure we're on the right side. It says again 0 0.001 to 0 0.003, right? All I do is I lay it across the piece, the piece that smashed, right? And I take a rough estimate and I say, okay, well that's that's a little bit smaller than 0 0.002, but it's definitely larger than 0 0.003, right? So that's how you determine what uh, what size clearance you have. And again, I checked it here, and I also checked it in the middle of the block. We're about the same. It's normal to see more of a gap on this on this uh, rear main because that's where all the loads at on on this engine, right? So uh, it's acceptable to be a little bit higher. All right, so we've set our rear thrust bearings. What we did was we lightly tor torqued everything down to 10, uh, 10 foot pounds, and then we just hammer on the back with a dead blow hammer and force those bearings to match up, right? So. Literally, they are aligned right now, and that's to, so we have even wear on both sides. So we make sure that they're not taking up more space than necessary, basically. So we hammered it forward, 
And uh, while we held it forward, it went through and tightened everything down. So everything's uh, to 110 foot pounds right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our dial indicator and put it on the snout. We're going to pry it all the way. We can pry it all the way one way or the other, forward or to the back. We'll pry this one to the uh, to the rear of the motor. We'll zero our indicator, and then we'll pry it all the way the other way and make sure that we're within spec. Uh, I believe the spec on this is uh, four to ten thousandths of an inch. So let's see what we got. Make sure it's as straight as possible. Don't worry about zeroing it now. What we're gonna do is pry on the crank with the block and we're going to pry it all the way to the rear of the motor which is where it's pretty much at anyway all right so I'm going to take this set it to zero just be patient there we go zero all right so we're at zero now we let it go it automatically rides forward a little bit and we're going to pry it in the other direction So it's reading eight thousandths. And there we go. Try it again. Eight and a half. Yeah, eight and a half thousandths. That's good. That's within spec. We're good to go. Finish putting the pump on. You guys really don't need to watch me do the pump. There's nothing to it pretty straightforward. Alright we just installed the oil pump. This is a high volume pump. It's critical now that we make sure that there's enough room between the screen and uh, the pickup tube and the pan itself. I already put this pan on once just to make sure it fit without the gasket and I actually had some interference. I had to uh, I had to give it some love with a hammer. <laughs> this is just a Summit oil pan it has a hinge baffle in here to help hold the oil around this pickup. So what we want to do, right, we already installed the pump, everything's good. If, if this screen or if this pickup tube didn't have a bolt to hold it on, I would actually braze this in or tack weld it in after I verified my clearance was good. So all I did was put some tape, some masking tape over this, right, to keep this Play-Doh. You actually use Play-Doh rather than clay. Uh, but just to keep this Play-Doh from getting inside the screen and causing us a mess. You just roll it in two balls. GM, I, I think the clearance on this, the standard clearance, is a quarter to three-eighths of an inch. Since we have a high volume pump and not a standard pump, I would like to see just under half an inch with the gasket. If I'm between three-eighths and half an inch, I'm, I'm alright with that. But again, I want to be under that half inch. And uh, three-eighths would that be ideal. I ever used my dial indicator to check my gasket. It was a tenth of an inch. And uh, when I set this on, I'm going to rotate the engine over just to make sure there's no clearance issues with anything else. Because there is a screen in this pan, and I don't know how that's going to interact with our, uh, our counterweights on our crankshaft. Because it is, a, it is a stroker. So we'll make sure we're clear. If it clears with no pan, it'll clear. Or if it clears with no gasket, it'll clear with a gasket for sure. So, we just set it on top like we normally would. Nice and slow, line the bolt holes up. Alright, we don't need to torque this down. It's heavy enough as it is. Just make sure that the holes are lined up and that's where it's going to sit. If you guys want to put the, put the gasket on it and torque it down, you can. So I actually got a little in the screen in the pan. We'll clean that out. But that was just when it was going by. All right, so it left an indentation. I can see the the bottom of the pan here. All we're gonna do is take this take this clay. You can see it uh, smash it down pretty good. We're gonna take our dial indicator and measure that. Three two five point three two five. Again, about the same. So it looks pretty flat. Check this other piece. And this is a little bit thicker. And 
Yeah, it looks like it's not sitting level, but it's still within spec. It'll be fine. I don't have any issues with that. I'll show you guys uh, a trick to get this camshaft in. Camshaft is what we're putting in next. So before I put this pan on, I like to actually uh, run a wire or something down below and uh, feed it by hand, you know, because I don't want it. Once it gets too heavy, I don't have a camshaft tool. I like to hold up one end and feed it through with the other one. So that way I, I, I can eliminate it from dropping on my bearings. 